Amen. Romans 12, 2. I'm reading from the Living Translation. And it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Mm -hmm. I just want to talk to you today. Is that okay? That's yeah. right. I just want to talk to you from the subject for just a little while. The mind. Amen. Amen. Do you want to look back months from now, years from now, and see a remarkable difference yes. in your life? Yes. Are you tired of going through the same test yes. all the time? Well. Do you desire to change? Yes. Do you really and truly want to grow? Amen. Yes. Do you ever get frustrated? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because maybe you're not too clear about what God wants you to do. Well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like you're spinning your wheels. Mm -hmm. it, it appears that everyone else has been given their assignment well. but you. Mm -hmm. And they're running with it. They're excited. They're on fire. But you, you're still not sure. Mm. And when you don't know the plan for yeah. your life, Come on. nothing mm. can fill that void. Well. Nothing can truly satisfy you until you know what your purpose is, mm -hmm. what God's plan is for your life. A lot of times we incorrectly think, well, if I just had a little bit more money, if my family were more financially sound, well, that would fix everything. Yeah, yeah. That'll fix everything. That'll make everything complete. But it won't. Come on now. That's why you still have rich folk who are not satisfied. Well, right. so true. After you have everything material that you yeah. want, mm -hmm. if you still don't know your purpose, there's still a void that money and material things That's cannot right. fill. That's right. Yes, yes. Having it all, anything and everything you could possibly want, but still feeling incomplete is not success. That's right. You have people who well, well, once I get married and find that right man or woman, I feel whole. And then they get married but still feel like something is missing in their lives. Everyone has an inner desire to be used and to know their divine purpose. Amen. Not until you know what your purpose is and you're actually walking in it will you be completely fulfilled. Say so. Living your life not knowing what your purpose is, it can be frustrating. Mm -hmm. And you feel like a failure because you feel like you're not being used for what you were created for. Amen. That's why people will waste a lot of hard-earned money talking to psychics, uh -huh. trying to get answers yeah. for their life. Uh -huh. That's why every time you see someone claiming to have a prophetic ministry, people are waiting anxiously to hear a word. Yeah. Yeah. But today, prophecy only confirms what God has already told you. Uh -huh. yeah. Because we want stuff quick. Well... Uh -oh. We try to bypass God and get right to the answer. Uh -oh. yes. That's right. Harvesters don't ever act on a prophetic word until God speaks it to you. That's right. And most definitely don't act on it if it doesn't line up with God's word. Uh -huh. Old Testament prophets and New Testament prophets don't operate the same. Come 
Come on, teach right. me. Teach. People go to modern day prophets seeking and searching for answers in their life, but prophetic ministry today will only confirm what God has already told you. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. You still have to put in the time with God. Uh -huh. Amen. Jesus gave his life on the cross so you would be able to put in the time with God. He died so you would be able to enter into the Holy of Holies. So you could stand in the presence of God yourself. I preached a sermon a few Sundays ago called Incorrect Assumptions. And in that sermon, God had me talk about our need to know. We need to know. We, we want to know our purpose. And because of this need, some people gravitate towards everything but the source that holds the answer. Bye, bye, bye. Yes. So maybe your prayer to God has been, what is your plan for my life, God? What, what do you want from me? Why am I here? What did you put me here to do? Well, the way to find the answer it's found in Romans 12, 2. Mm -hmm. Real quick, the book of Romans was written by the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul had never visited this church. He, he wasn't the one who had established it, but he really wanted to meet them. So in preparation for his visit and to introduce himself to them, he writes them this letter. Paul talks to them about a variety of things, but in the 12th chapter, he talks to them about how we as Christians should live, how we should behave, and how we are to grow and discover the plan that God has for our lives. Oh, James just looked at Satan, and he said, you can't see it, Satan, but I've grown down. Right. I've grown up right. and I've grown out. Preach that word, man. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Yes, sir. Me and my life, we will serve the Lord. There are a lot of powerful verses in this chapter, and I ask you to read it on your own, but for today and for time's sake, we're only going to focus on verse 2. Verse 2 can and will change your life if you allow it to. King James Version says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Living Translation says it this way, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Remember, Paul is talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. He tells them, let God. Mm -hmm. Let God transform you. God has given us freedom of choice. You have to let God mm -hmm. transform you. Don't fight God. Don't Fight the transformation. I'm going somewhere with this. I know you are. <laughs> what do you mean, let God? God can do whatever he wants. That's right. <laughs> I can't hinder God from changing me. How do I fight God? Yes, yes, teach. You hinder God, you fight God, and you use your freedom of choice when you don't change the way you think. That's right. Can I give you an example? When we were growing up, some of you younger generation might not remember this, but we used to, we used to, my brother had a toy, it was called Transformer. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember those Transformers. There was a song, yeah. Robots in Disguise. Transformer. Y'all remember those? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. 
But Transformer was a it was a car. It started out as a car, and I think later on they became trucks or something. Yeah, like that. everything. Um, but they were they were they were all kinds of things, and they were ordinary. You know, they looked just like the next car. You know, the next truck or whatever. And but they transformed. Well. And when when you played with them, you you would pull on them, and you know, they have to pull parts mm -hmm. of them out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know. You really didn't know what you were getting if you'd never seen it transform before until you started pulling at it, mm -hmm. pushing at it. Come on, Pastor B, teach. Tugging on it. <laughs> but as soon as you finished pulling at it and tugging on it, you saw what it transformed into. All right now. Amen. Okay, well, we're the same. God has to. Pull on us sometimes. Yes, yes. Pull on us. He has to tug on us sometimes. Yes. But what happens is, is sometimes he pulls, and he pulls by way of trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. He pulls. He pulls. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing happening. Teach me. <laughs> So he pulls, trial and tribulation. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's the same trial a lot of times because we ain't learned the lesson. He pulls, he pulls. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's some big pulls. Mm -hmm. We don't learn our lesson. That's right. What hinders God from changing us? Is the mind. <laughs> so you hinder God by refusing mm -hmm. to renew and change his mind. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. God pulls us out, pulls at our heart. And, and we can go the easy way or the hard way. Mm -hmm. God pulls at our heart sometimes. But when the Holy Spirit, he says, now you know that ain't right. Yes, he will speak. Mm -hmm. You know you shouldn't have said that. You know you shouldn't have acted that way. You know you shouldn't have taken that. Now, if we're smart, we'll say, yes, God, that's me. I, oh, God, that's me. Lord, help me change. And you go find scripture. You get in this word. And you begin to read scripture on that particular subject because you know you got that old data and that old brain of yours. And, and you got to read some new scripture, some new information to start pushing and purging that old junk out. Come on, yes. yes. Well, if you don't do that, trials and tribulations. Mm. So if you're smart, you go ahead and address it. Therefore, if a man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and all things are become new. So, what, what are you talking about, Pastor V? Well, all things have become new. When you give your life to Christ, the slate is clean. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. It all becomes new. You start over, brand new. All things have become new. Let me ask you a question to prove this. When you do stuff now that you know is a sin against mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. are you convicted? Amen. Are you convicted to change? Yes. Does it bother you because you know it's wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, that's evidence that something did change on yes. the inside yes. of you. Yes. But if you don't change the stinking thinking, mm -hmm. ooh, ah. <laughs> If you don't change the way you think, you will continue to see the old creature habits. Mm -hmm. yes. You've got to change this mind. The fact that the slate is clean and that the old has passed away doesn't mean that you won't still fall short sometimes. That's right. If you slip back into your old creature habits, if change truly has taken place on the inside of you, you will be convicted by your choices. Yes. But in order for transformation to take place, you have to renew your mind. Your lifestyle change is the image. It's the image. It's the physical manifestation 
of the invisible change. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Let me go back. Amen. Your lifestyle change is the image. It's the physical manifestation of the invisible change. What do you mean? What happened to you on the inside uh -huh. when Jesus came into your heart is invisible to the human eye. Uh -huh. The way you treat people, though, uh -huh. the way you love people, the way you act when you're not at church, your attitude, your lifestyle, your obedience to God is the physical manifestation of the invisible change. Yes. Yes. When you truly have Jesus Christ in your heart and you desire to change, people can't, a surgeon can't open up your heart, cut your heart open and see Jesus in there saying, it's me, I'm in here. <laughs> no. They see him in the way you live. And the way you change to look like him. Romans 12, 2 lets us know the way you think is directly connected to being able to see the inside change on the outside. Can I give you an illustration? When God created us, if you remember in the book of Genesis, it said God created us and when he created us, he breathed the breath of life into us. And man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. In order for us to walk on the face of the earth legally, we have to have an earth suit. Mm -hmm. But that's not who we really are. That's who people see. Come on, teach me. But that's not the true you. That's just your suit. <laughs> to walk around hearing yeah, 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 yeah. legally mm -hmm. yeah. okay mm -hmm. so every one of us before you give your life to Christ every human being has a portion of God's spirit in them because without it you did mm -hmm. you did so Taylor if you'll step to the <coughs> right is acting as our spirit J. Reed, if you'll step, is acting as our soul. So man is made up of three parts. That's right. We have the soul, we have the flesh, and we have the spirit. Well, when Jesus Christ comes into your heart, he attaches himself to your spirit man. Amen. Thank yes. you, Jesus. He's attached to your spirit man. And the yes. Bible tells us that the flesh don't want Won't what the spirit wants. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Never does. And the spirit definitely doesn't want what Amen. the flesh wants. That's right. And so they're at constant war. Amen. What are you talking <laughs> 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 and the flesh is going to always want what pleases okay. it. Mm -hmm. So the spirit is saying to the flesh, no, you don't need to do that. You know that's not right. No, it's not right. And the flesh is just going, yes, it is. That's what I want. <laughs> Tiana, come here, baby. You stay right here and still act as Jesus connected to the his soul, to the spirit, right? Stay right here. So you got on your white too? Yes. All right. Well, what's in the soul? The mind, the will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. That's what's in your soul. So, if this mind in here is not renewed, because well, your body can't do nothing unless your mind yeah, tells it. Right. Your, your body, if your mind has to tell your body to move its feet, its hands, right. everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So this can't do anything until this right here tells it. So this mind in here, if it's not renewed, and well. the flesh says, I won't, such and such and such, it doesn't line up with the word of God. If this mind is not renewed, it's going to give in. It's going to give him what he wants. Yeah, we got it, It's going to give him what he wants. So, but what if we 
Get the word of God. Mm -hmm. I got Thank you for your word, Lord. And, and all that old data that was in this mind starts to Purge out. Purging out. Mm -hmm. Eat. E purge. E purge. <laughs> Taking in all this word of God that is truth. This mind is like a computer. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like a hard drive. You just wipe it clean by feeding on God's word and purging out the old. Okay, well now the flesh says, I want da 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 da. It doesn't line up with the word of God. <laughs> this mind is like, uh, no. Uh -uh. I'm going to side with the spirit. Uh -oh. Hey, come on, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> and you left out in the cold. <laughs> you can't have what you want. Because my mind is renewed. And it knows what the spirit knows. And so I'm agreeing with the spirit on this. So no, you cannot have it. Oh, man. <laughs> That's why it's so important that we renew the mind. That's right. But we don't. We spend more time feeding our That's flesh right. Teach up in here. than we do yeah. changing and renewing oh. our mind and feeding oh. our spirit. Amen. When you eat the word of God, it strengthens your That's spirit. That's right. That's right. It strengthens your spirit and yeah. renews your, your mind. mind. Yeah. So if you don't take the time to feed the spirit and renew the mind, yes. the flesh is going to continue walking in old creature habits, even though it's saved. Does it mean he's not saved anymore? No. It just means he's not renewing his mind. And he's listening to an unrenewed mind. Will he go to heaven? Yeah. But his life here on earth won't be as productive. He won't be able to experience the blessings of God like God would have him to because of his unrenewed mind. Amen. Amen. We've got to renew the mind. That's good. That's good. That's good. So if you know you've got an issue flesh, let's just, just use something uh, with lying. Let's just use that. You lie all the time. All the time. <laughs> lie all the time. All, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Those are old creature habits. So in order to rectify that, you need to start reading scriptures on lying, you know, and begin to renew this mind. So when a lie feels like it's going to come about the flesh, the mind says, uh-huh, no, 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 we ain't doing that. Amen. 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 Thank y'all. Man is a spirit that possesses a soul, mm -hmm. and we live in a body. Amen. Amen. And Paul says to us that when you allow this mind to be changed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He says, then you will know what God's plan and will is for your life. We, we want to make it something just, you know, major, big, and but it's as simple as that. Read God's word, get to know God, nurture your relationship with Jesus Christ, and you will grow. Amen. And you will know what God has for you.